Welcome back to my channel. Today we will be looking at what we are going to be looking at stammer stress. In my last in my last video we talked about stress and strain. So today we'll be looking at what stammer stress. Now, the word stammer simply means eats. Eats. Normally, in my last video we said a body would deform when some amount of load is being exerted on the body. It's going to cause a deformation on the body. It is not only when a body is subjected to loading that deformation occurs. Sometimes a body deformed when the body is related towards some amount of heat. Take for instance, we know that what thermal expansion takes place in what different kind of what in what different materials. So because of thermal what expansivity expansion, sorry, because of thermal what expansion, engineers need to put some consideration in their design. For example, any member that is made of metal. Take for instance, any member that is what, made of metal, you know, metals are good conductor of what heat and electricity. All together, they tend to expand when they are being what when they change temperature. For example, now let me give you an instance. Um, like your metal bridge, any bridge that has what that is being constructed from what metal, they expand during the day. Simply means due to what an increase in temperature that is found during the day. When the, the when temperature is reduced at what evening period, there is kind of what contraction in the member. All together now you see this expansion is due to the what this expansion is always due to what the changes in temperature that the member is being subjected to whenever a member is related to change in temperature it leads to what an expansion of the what of the member now we knew that what the linear expansivity of a member linear expansivity of a member you know every member has their own amount of what linear expansivity now, when we say linear expansivity, it simply means the what expansion of the member per unit length of the member times the change in temperature. Now, the linear expansivity is given as what alpha. Now, when we said linear expansivity, it simply shows that what we are assuming that the member is expanding under some amount of temperature only along its length. All together, remember it's expanding along its length like this. All together, the coefficient of expansion that we have there is known as what linear coefficient of linear expansivity. Now, really, our coefficient of linear expansivity is always equal to what the change in length of the member, which is this. This is the original length, all about the original length of the member times the change in what temperature. I mean, the temperature change that the member was. Has undergone now that causes the what, deformation in the member. Now, this is a kind of what a free expansion. Why do I call it a free expansion? Because this member is expanding, it, it cannot expand due to what the two ends of the member are free to move. All together now, when a member does not have any constraint, you grab when you change them now, the change in the increase in temperature of that member leads to just only what deformation of the member. No stress to be induced in the member. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, how can we induce stress in a member? Okay, for instance, here, if I have a bar, a bar member, this is the bar that is there. The bar is now what's fixed at two end here. The bar is fixed along this end here. Now, if the bar member is fixed here, normally if I change, if the initial temperature of this bar is T, is T1, now then I increase the temperature of the bar to T2. Altogether, what will happen? The bar will tend to expand due to temperature, due to change in temperature. Altogether, now the expansion of this bar will be what will be affected by this fixed region here. That means if the bar tends to expand, this fixed region will tend to what compress it back. Simply means the expansion will not be able to what take place due to the compression of this fixed axis here. That, so you need to do what the force exerted by this what, this phase region. Now the force that is expanded to what, to counter the expansion of this of this um, um, of this bar leads to what we call stress. So the kind of stress that is generated in that member is known as thermal stress. Altogether, simply means the member tends to what extend, but the the fixed points tend to what return it back to its initial position. So. Stress will what be induced in the member. So thermal stress is only induced when a member is what when a member is fixed at what its two end. Then there will be what stress. 
But when the member is free to move at its two end, no stress is induced in the member. All together. Now, in that case here, we can easily calculate for the stress of the member. If the deformation of the member change L is equal to alpha times L times the length times change in temperature. Normally, we know that what strain in a member, strain that is caused in a member is always equal to deformation change in L over the original length. Now, if I substitute this into this my equation, I should be having the strain exactly should be alpha lt over l, l comes to l, have it? Then the strain in the member should be equal to alpha times temperature only. That means alpha times what? Temperature. Now, take a look at something here. If the strain in the member is this, we can easily calculate for the stress. Since in my last video, we talked about what stress due to force. Now, the stress exerted on the member is always given as the strain times the young modulus. Don't forget that the young modulus or modulus of elasticity is always equal to the ratio of the stress to the what? To the strain. Now, the stress is equal to what? Stress times what? Young modulus. Then I can have P to be equal to alpha C, which is my strain, times what? Young modulus. So, thermal stress is given as this formula of what? Linear responsivity of the, of the material times temperature change times young modulus. Don't forget something I said, something that works. Every member has its own value of the load coefficient of linear expansivity. Different member has what? The amount of temperature that can what? Increase their temperature. All together, there are some temperature that will be very, very large. Now, the member with the highest amount of temperature that can what is what? Steel. Steel has what? High hot temperature to what? To increase temperature of steel, it requires what? More heat, I get it, than any other members. All together. Now, how do we not calculate? Majorly, we I want to know the amount of force that is exerted in this. If you check here, now we have two deformation here. Yeah, one of the deformation is that what it is. The fourth deformation is due to what change in temperature. Why the second deformation of the member is due to what compression of the fixed point. Now, this is what I'm trying to say here. You see, normally this member, if you assume, if I assume that this thing is not there, this fixed end, one of the end is not fixed. Then if I increase the temperature of this member, this member tends to what increase in temperature. So under what? New length. Sorry? That means it increase. Increase there is an increase in temperature. Sorry. Sorry. There is an increase in length of the member. All together. Now this member tends to return it back to its initial position by exerting a force back on the member. It will return it back to what? Initial position. Now, in this place, the member has deformed. Have you? It extends. Extension. Why is one term give us what? Compression. Are you getting what I'm that? Now, in that case, the total deformation of this member, total deformation of the member, which is given as what? I can write it as what? My total deformation of the member is equal to the deformation cost due to temperature. Deformation cost due to what temperature minus deformation cost due to the compressive force that is what created by this fixed axis. Fixed what point here. All together. So the total deformation is always equal to what this. Now we have by the total deformation of the member will be equal to what zero. Now, why will the total deformation equal to zero? That means the total deformation of this member, since the inward force, you know, the deformation of this is what? Along this direction, why this one is what? Deforming backward like this. So the sum total of what deformation should be what? Equal to each other, such that I'll be having the total deformation of the body, dt minus d to be equal to what? Zero. Altogether, simply means if you are given a calculation under thermal stress, we can easily find. You might be asked to calculate for the what? The temperature, the change in the final temperature for expansion, for the expansion, or you are asked to calculate for the force exerted by this what? By this fixed point to compress the body, to, sorry, to stop the extension of the body. Now, that can easily be calculated. How do we calculate it? Number one, we will find the what? The extension of the member, assuming that the member is not fixed. 
We have seen that the member is not what? Is not fixed. So we find the extension of the member when the member is not fixed. All together. Now, how do we find the extension? Normally, the extension of the member can easily be gotten by writing what? The formation is equal to um, alpha, alpha, L, and what? Temperature. We usually find what extension of the member using this method, which is what the formation is equal to alpha L times what temperature. Then after getting the formation due to what temperature, they will now calculate for the deformation of the member. All together, due to force. This is deformation due to force. This is formation due to what temperature. Now we we'll find the formation, the formation of the member due to what temperature. All together, that means now we assume that there is nothing here. Then the second in instance, we are going to find the formation of the member due to force, but we assume that what this constraint I get in, is exactly what a compressive force on the member. Then the formation should be gotten using what force times the length of the member, all over what area of the member times the young modulus. Then from here we can calculate what the deformation of the member. Then the deformation of the member was equal because the load the member is subjected to the same what stress. Please don't forget, a member that is loaded, I get it, <clears throat> all together. Now, if a member is loaded, all together, if a member is what? Sorry? If a member is what? Um, if, sorry, if the temperature of a member is what? Change, are you getting me? The stress that will be imposed in the member will be the same. The stress that will be imposed in this place, I think, is what uniform show out, which is the thermal stress. Please don't forget about this. So, in my next video, we are going to look into what? If the members, that means if you have two or more members that are joined together and the temperature of the member is changed, how do we calculate for the, for the, for the total deformation of the member? Please, please see my next video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep on the work, to, work, to keep on the good work that we're doing, that we can work, learn more from all this. Please, when you subscribe, don't forget to click on the notification bell. To receive my words, to receive notification of my new videos and also like my video and share. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.